Hello there everybody and welcome to the latest video. Um, not in my usual style of video and that is becoming a catchphrase of mine. Um, yeah, me and my friend Mark have been doing a weekly drone news live stream and um, that airs on a Wednesday night. Um, 11 p.m. UK time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Just thought I'd plug the show. That alternates between our channels. I'll put Centroid's link in the um, in the description. Um, please come and check it out. It's very interesting, and it's show number 10 on Wednesday night. So, um, yeah. Anyway, on this show, we often um, hear of drone news stories with articles and links and everything about drone near misses. Now, there was recently an Airprox report where um, no. Um, UK drone sighting could be validated as a drone. Now, I've always been a fan of flight simulator, so what I wanted to do was m like import a drone object into Microsoft Flight Simulator and fly multiple aircraft towards it and just see how visible it would be from the virtual cockpit. Okay, so let's just remember that this is just for entertainment purposes only. This is not serious in any way, but just to get an idea of how visible a drone would be. Okay, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you in a second. Shazam! Yes, okay, so this clip right now is to show the 3D model of a drone that I've imported into Flight Simulator. Now these drones don't move, they're just set as static objects and I've done it as fair as possible. I've put the dimensions as close as I can get to a Mavic Pro they measure 36 by 27 centimeters. So um, the Mavic Pro is about 30 centimeters across in any direction. So they're about the perfect analog for the Mavic Pro. And um, essentially that is the Premier, one of the most popular drones at the minute. So um, yeah, bear in mind drones do get bigger and smaller. I've set it as completely black to make it more apparent against the sky as well. And I'm running this in 4K, nice and crisp. So uh, yeah, let's get on to the first test. Okay, so I got a little bit ahead of myself there. This is just a quick size comparison with the jumbo jet. So just so you get the idea of um, the size difference, just so you can see it for yourself. There you go. Right, now we're on to the, uh, the first test. Okay, so test one is beginning right now. Now, let's just be clear, them orbs in the sky are literally like waypoint markers I've put in because trying to pick out a drone in the sky at distance when you've put a set altitude and you're trying to go a set speed is very difficult. That's how hard these things are to see. Um, so at the minute, it's just a basic micro light, go about 70 knots, something like that. Um, I'm not sure what that is in miles per hour, but it is very much slow enough to see a drone and you will um, you'll see that in a second. I did two separate tests of this um, where I got close and if you was flying that close, yes, it would be very easy to identify in a split second like that that there was a drone, okay? Okay, so test number two on the approach. Um, here we go. I am flying over speed, so I'm going a bit quicker than normal. You can see the drone here, and it is identifiable in a split second. And obviously, I'm flying straight towards it, but identifiable. Okay, so right now we're on round two of the test. This is a Cessna 172. And um, these are very common aircraft um, flown worldwide. And um, I'm coming in at landing speeds here, which is 65 knots, 30 degrees flaps. And uh, the drone is now in sight. And as it approaches, I would say as it passes that that is identifiable. Definitely. Okay, next test. Okay, so we're on round two of test two. This is still in the Cessna. I'm going cruising speed, which is around 120 knots. Um, I'm heading straight at the drone here. Now, um, in my opinion, if you wasn't expecting to see a drone under these circumstances, I think you'd have trouble identifying that in a split second. That's just my own opinion. And as we go faster and faster, it'll become more and more apparent that it's very, very difficult to identify a drone at any speed higher than that. Um, okay, so on to the next test. Okay, so coming up in this test, I am actually reducing speed, 30 degrees flaps again, about 250 knots, which is about as slow as you can go um, without stalling, essentially, um, for landing in a 747. So, um, yeah, obviously the, the cockpit obscures the view quite a bit. And if you wasn't expecting to see that at them speeds, 
you'd have a lot of trouble basically. Um, at them speeds you're travelling around 160 miles an hour. Um, it'd be very tough to see if th that was a drone. You'd be able to see the object but identifying it in the way that some of these AIRPROX reports are done would be quite difficult and that's where the majority of these sightings are coming from is commercial airline pilots. So, um, Okay, so let's go on to round three, test two, where we'll just like go cruising speed of a jumbo jet. Okay, so for this test we're going in all guns blazing, going completely over speed. The aircraft is not designed to uh, fly around these speeds, or so it claims. But I'm coming in nice and fast just to see how it would look. There we go whoosh you'd never be able to identify that in a split second i'll give that a quick slow-mo just so you can see because i know that that one was particularly hard to spot um nice one i'll show you the slow-mo right now the drone is visible here and it's gone there um yeah so that's very telling um me and my friend mark um actually did the calculations for landing speed of a 747 um, and it is 184 miles an hour or 296 kilometers per hour. Now that gives you um, at 500 meters a Mavic Pro is basically um, you can't see it um, and that's from my own experience. Anything beyond 500 meters line of sight disappears. So um, yeah essentially that gives six seconds you know <laughs> Um, to cover 500 meters so from seeing the drone to it being completely passed where you can't see it in the cockpit that is the <laughs> that is the maths behind it and cruising speed um, which is also where some of these jumbo jets have reported seeing these drones at like 1300 feet and 3000 feet and whatnot um, they travel at 570 miles an hour apparently and um, that equals 917 kilometers per hour now that gives two seconds to, well, less than two seconds to cover 500 meters. So from seeing the drone at some point in the sky, they might not even be heading straight towards it, to identifying it, to passing it within two seconds and they're not expecting to see a drone. I find that quite implausible. I mean, I'm heading right at the drones in this simulator and at them speeds, they're difficult to see. It could have been a bird. It could have been a metallic balloon, in my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please bear in mind that this is just for entertainment purposes. Um, I'm not trying to draw any major conclusions. Obviously, it is a simulator. And, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember to catch the show on Wednesday nights with uh, Mark and myself. The link to his channel is down below. It does alternate. And I'll catch you all in the next video.